Earlier, we already discussed 30 oddities of the United States of America, where we came to the conclusion that the country is not only huge, a center of the world, and probably the most famous country, but it's also a truly unique country. We've Earth Basics started a detailed search for the most remarkable pieces of land and found 30 pieces of pure fascination. Since we enjoyed this journey so much, we decided to dig ourselves another 20 oddities, but this time it'll be about the mighty Australia. Australia is full of amazing places and states. However, very few people know the actual truth and details about this huge land, so let's discover them together. The first oddity, Macquarie Island. Right in the middle between Antarctica and the island of Tasmania sits a little spit of land with significant historical significance. Aside from its animal life, the island possesses a more unique distinction in geological history. It's one of the few spots on the planet where rocks from the Earth's mantle are exposed above sea level. Macquarie Island was formed by the same geological processes that created the Himalayan mountain range. The Himalayas were formed when the Indian Plate, the tectonic plate on which the Indian subcontinent is located, collided with the Asian supercontinent 50 million years ago. Macquarie Island formed as a result of an interaction between the Indo-Australian and Pacific plates. Though the outcome of their collision is on a smaller scale, Macquarie's highest point is only 1,345 feet. Number 2. Tasmania does have a land border Although few people know this, Tasmania actually does have a land border with another Australian state. Laying 240 kilometers from Australian mainland, no one really minds about the question whether Tasmania has a land border or not, but it does. It does so entirely by accident. When the sea border between Tasmania and Victoria was drawn at 39 degrees 12 south, it was considered that the line only crossed open water. However, upon closer inspection, the line did traverse a small island that had been slightly mistaken in a previous survey. Due to a wrong map, Victoria, the southernmost state of Australia and Tasmania, the island located 240 kilometers away from the Australian mainland shares a border, the only land border of Tasmania and the shortest of Australia with only 85 meters. Number 3. New South Wales-Victoria Border Like many countries, territories, and states in the world, this border was determined based on a natural feature, the Murray River. However, just like the Rio Grande River, of which of course changed leaving parts of Texas on the Mexican side of the river, the Murray River changed its course, leaving parts of New South Wales on the Victoria side of the river. Number 4. Point where three states meet Cameron Corner In the outback at the intersection on the borders of Queensland, South Australia, and New South Wales, you'll find Cameron Corner. It's a remote spot with a marker indicating the point where these three states meet. Number 5. Another three states meeting point The Three-Cornered Hat the point where the borders of Western Australia, South Australia, and the Northern Territory meet is sometimes called the Three-Cornered Hat. It's a remote location in the Australian outback. Number 6. Exclave of Australian Capital Territory The capital of countries are often seen as the center of a country, and so is Canberra. Canberra is, however, situated right here, just a few kilometers of the East Coast. It's part of the Australian Capital Territory. And so is Jervis Bay Territory, which is located here on the east coast and so away from its mainland. The Jervis Bay Territory is an Australian internal territory. It was formed in 1915 from a portion of New South Wales in order to provide access to the sea for the landlocked Australian Capital Territory. Number 7. It's an exclave of an enclave. It's an enclave of an exclave. Yeah, okay, that sounds complicated. Well, while the Jervis Bay Territory is an exclave of the Australian Capital Territory, the ACT, the ACT itself is an enclave within the state of New South Wales. Now, you might wonder, of what state is it an exclave? Well, actually, it isn't an exclave. You see, the ACT is technically an own governing territory. You should see it as a small, unofficial state within the borders of New South Wales. In the early 20th century, the need arose to establish a new national capital city for Australia because neither Sydney in NSW nor Melbourne in Victoria could be chosen as the capital to avoid favoring one state over the other. As a result, Canberra was chosen as the site for the new capital city in 1913. To create the Australian Capital Territory, a specific area of land in NSW was ceded to the Commonwealth of Australia. This land was chosen because it was relatively equidistant from Sydney and Melbourne and was considered neutral ground. 
The ACT was granted self-governing status in 1988 through the Australia Act. It has its own legislative assembly and government, which are responsible for local governance and decision-making within the territory. So although geographically it's part of New South Wales, it's considered an exclave due to their own governing system. Number 8. Far from the mainland Although not close to the mainland, Australia, just like many other countries, claims part of Antarctica. Besides France, Chile, the UK, New Zealand, Argentina, and Norway, Australia claims the largest part, the Australian Antarctic Territory. It encompasses the region of Antarctica claimed by Australia and is considered an external territory of Australia. Number 9. Overseas Territories Australia is home to multiple overseas territories, the closest to Australian mainland at 400 kilometers away being the Coral Sea Islands. While the territory the furthest away except for Antarctica, of course, is Heard and McDonald Islands at more than 4,000 kilometers. Another overseas territory is Norfolk Island, located more than 1,900 kilometers away from mainland Australia. And this one is actually more interesting since it's the own non-mainland Australian territory with a self-governing system. Number 10. Anna Creek Station We all know Australia has few people compared to other huge countries, and so they're home to some big territories like the Anna Creek Station, which is the largest active cattle station in the world. With 23,677 square kilometers, this station is larger in size than countries like Belize, El Salvador, and Israel. It's 8,000 square kilometers larger than its nearest competitor, Alexandria Station in the country's Northern Territory, and more than seven times the size of the largest ranch in the United States, King Ranch in Texas, which is 3,340 square kilometers. This cattle is definitely living the good life. Number 11. Wrong Surveys, Wrong Border Although they appear to be straight, the borders between Western Australia, the Northern Territory, and South Australia are not. And so, the Northern Territory and South Australian borders are displaced east-west by approximately 127 meters, 417 feet, due to early survey errors within the limits of technology available in the 1920s when the current border was surveyed. Don't get it yet? Let me explain it quickly. So the border was supposed to be on the 129th meridian. However, instead of measuring from one end of the continent to the other, two points near the meridian were chosen at each end, and a north-south line was drawn from each. The only problem was that the points weren't exactly on the meridian, thus the north-south lines didn't match. However, instead of repairing it, they simply drew an east-west line connecting the two north-south lines. And so, just like the Tasmanian-Victoria border, we've got ourselves another error border, or whatever you want to call it. Still, although it was fixable, Australia had already agreed on not worrying too much about small mistakes. Number 10. Town in both states The border between Queensland and New South Wales was established based on a line of latitude, specifically the 29th parallel south. However, Due to limitations in the surveying technology of the time, there were inaccuracies in determining the exact location of this line. This resulted in discrepancies in the boundary's alignment with certain geographical features. One notable example is the town of Kulangata, which is situated near the border. Part of this town was mistakenly surveyed as being in New South Wales, while another part was in Queensland. This error was eventually corrected, and the border was adjusted in 1915 to its current location. Nowadays, the border from west to east is determined based on the 29th parallel until it hits the Tweed Rivers, which continues to separate the two states. Number 13. Another Border Mistake The border between Western Australia and South Australia is another example of the lack of technology while surveying, which includes the border town of Eucla. This is based on the 129th meridian east longitude. The original surveying work in the 19th century led to slight errors in determining the exact location of this meridian. As a result, there have been historical discrepancies in the location of the border and its effects on land ownership and property boundaries. Efforts have been made to clarify and rectify these discrepancies over the years. Number 14. A lake that's dry Moving closer to the center of the country and to the north of South Australia, we do find something very interesting. In the middle of a desert, there's actually a lake. Well, at least sometimes. While Lake Erie is mostly dry, it's not always. Lake Erie only fills up with water on rare occasions when there's significant rainfall in its vast catchment area, which extends over parts of Queensland, the Northern Territory, and South Australia. 
When it does fill with water, it becomes the largest lake in Australia, and even one of the largest in the world, covering an area that can exceed 9,500 square kilometers, about 3,600 square miles. It has Australia's lowest natural point, which is about 15 meters below sea level. When the lake is full, it has the same salinity as seawater, but as it dries and the water evaporates, it becomes hypersaline. Number 15. Longest Fence Stretching over 5,600 kilometers, about 3,480 miles, the Dingo Fence is the longest fence in the world, finished in 1885. It was built to keep dingoes, wild dogs, away from fertile land in southeastern Australia. The second longest fence in the world is found in, again, Australia, the rabbit-proof fence in Western Australia, 3,253 kilometers, 2,021 miles, completed in 1907. Number 16. Australia is bigger than you think. In Australia, literally all big cities are located at the coast, and approximately 87%, or 22 million people, live inside a coastal zone. Most of the larger cities are found on the southeastern side of the country. However, the 16th largest city in terms of population can be found all the way up on the northern coast. Darwin is the northernmost city considering the larger cities by population. On the other side of the country, all the way to the south, is Melbourne. The distance between these two is roughly 3,140 kilometers. This is comparable to the distance between Reykjavik in Iceland to Budapest in Hungary in a straight line, which is 3,080 kilometers. Number 17. Australian Antipodes – Opposite Point Much of Australia is located in the Southern Hemisphere, which means that many places in Australia have corresponding antipodes, or points on the Earth's surface directly opposite them. For example, the Antipode Melbourne and Canberra are close to the Azores Island of Portugal situated right here in the Atlantic Ocean. However, most of the Antipodes of Australia are situated on the opposite side of the Atlantic Ocean. Number 18. Islands are made of sand, but… Fraser Island, located off the coast of Queensland, is the largest sand island in the world. A sand island is an island composed primarily of sand. These are low-lying zones formed by loose particle deposition in the water and moved by currents and waves. Fraser Island is the world's largest sand island, and other significant sand islands include Moraton, South Stradbroke, and Bribey Islands, which are located south of Fraser Island off the east coast of Brisbane, Australia. Number 19. The Only Temperate Forests in the Southern Hemisphere Tasmania is extensively forested with the Southwest National Park and surrounding areas containing some of the Southern Hemisphere's last temperate rainforests. Forests cover 50% of the area, with reserves protecting 53% of these forests. A temperate forest is a type of forest found in the temperate zone, between the tropical and boreal zones, but Tasmania is also home to some. Number 20. Largest Freshwater Reservoir the Great Artesian Basin is one of the world's largest subterranean freshwater reservoirs, and Australia's largest. It lies beneath around 22% of Australia, including areas of Queensland, New South Wales, South Australia, and the Northern Territory. The basin is believed to hold 64,900 million megaliters of subterranean water. For more than a century, it has met many of the pastoral and community needs of a fifth of Australia's landmass. For much of inland Australia, the basin is the only supply of fresh water. Bonus: Much snow! The Australian Alps have more snow cover than Switzerland every year. The Alps, or Snowy Mountains, are part of the Great Dividing Range on Australia's east coast. The Great Dividing Range spans through the states of Queensland, New South Wales, and Victoria, stretching over 3,500 kilometers, 2,200 miles from north to south. Unfortunately, because Australia is divided into six separate states, and it's not densely populated with many different cities, there are a few examples of fascinating borders or mistakes made during surveys. We tried our best, but these 21 examples was all we could find. For the next country, we'll try to find 30 again. Small spoiler, the next country is the country of the people that are second on the list of my channel views. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching and see you in the next of Earth Basics.